Hey guys, it's Mitchell, your favorite millennial, and today I'm giving you my Songkran survival guide. Being that this is the day after Songkran, and I had a great time celebrating it here in Chiang Mai, Thailand, I wanted to give you guys some of my tips on how to have a safe and fun Songkran on your trip to Southeast Asia. Before we jump into that, make sure you hit the subscribe button for more videos relating to travel, tech, and just generally anything that millennials might want to watch. The first tip that I'm going to give you guys to surviving Songkran is understand what it is and respect it. Songkran is celebrated as the Thai New Year and it is celebrated countrywide in all of Thailand. Now specifically in Chiang Mai, because Chiang Mai has a moat surrounding the city, it has historically been the place of the biggest and most traditional Songkran celebration. Celebrating Songkran can take many shapes and forms and generally you'll see lots of Thai families or groups of friends on storefronts, drinking, eating, and just enjoying each other's company and spraying passers-by with water. Now the reason for all this water on Songkran is that traditionally every new year you're supposed to wash away your sins. The more traditional way to do it is you'll have a uh, silver or ornate little bowl and people will come up behind you and pour water down your back. It's meant to signify the washing away of sins so people doing this to you is done out of kindness and out of wanting for you to have a better new year and good luck. It's very common that if you get uh, splashed by someone in a more traditional manner, they will try to wish you good luck in whatever language they think that you speak and it is not something to be offended by. In more recent years, because of how colorful and bright the celebration of Songkran is, it has become slightly more westernized with people coming from around the world to Chiang Mai just to take part in what is essentially the world's biggest water fight. Now, if you are planning a trip to Thailand, I couldn't suggest coming during this time highly enough. It is a lot of fun and you are bound to meet people from all over the world, young and old. It is not uncommon to walk past a group of people that look like grandparents and they smile and wave at you and then you turn around and they're splashing you with water and that's just the type of holiday it is and it is really that vibrant and that lively My second tip for surviving Songkran in Thailand is to just accept the fact that you are going to be wet. Now, I can't stress this highly enough. If you wear a uh, poncho or some type of rain or waterproof material, it is just going to make you a bigger target and people are going to try to get you wet through that poncho. It was not uncommon to for me to see walking the streets, people with buckets of water running up to someone in a poncho and trying to douse them um, underneath the poncho. That's just because of the religious aspect of it. So my suggestion to you is bring a bathing suit uh, and wear comfortable shoes. Now I'm gonna have a separate video outlining my Songkran shopping list of items that you might need or things that I wish I had and I'll put that video in the description down below. But just accept that you're gonna get wet and be prepared for it. Things like waterproofing your cell phone, having a dry place to put money are all things that I can't suggest highly enough. These are also things that I'm going to cover in a separate video because there are some items that I feel like will enhance your Songkran experience and just allow you to celebrate it worry-free. Yeah. My third tip to surviving Songkran is to befriend a local. Now there's tons of ways to do this and personally I use Tinder to reach out to a couple different Thai locals and I eventually befriended a really sweet Thai girl who wants to get better at speaking English. She teaches me some Thai and we had a great day together. I can't stress this enough that because there's different layers to Songkran in regards to what you're celebrating, befriend someone who is English speaking, who is Thai, and who is around Chiang Mai if that's where you're going to be to celebrate. It. They're going to be able to answer questions for you that might seem kind of simple or seem kind of almost stupid to ask and answering those questions either about you know uh, where the tradition comes from, what is a traditional celebration, where to eat, all things like that are things that are really going to enhance your Songkran experience and they get to practice their English with you and it's a great exchange. I can't stress this highly enough and I saw a lot of other Western men and women with someone that appeared to be a local and I can only say that my Songkran experience wouldn't have been complete without my friend May who 
answered tons of questions for me in regards to what's uh, tradition, um, where to eat, uh, what's disrespectful during this holiday. Uh, when we went into a Thai temple, she was explaining to me about the offerings and why there's so many colorful streamers and stuff like that everywhere. And it's really a, a big enhancement to your Songkran experience. Because the holiday lasts for three days, I would definitely recommend to anyone to befriend a local and spend at least one day celebrating with them just to see how a local individual would celebrate the holiday. It's really, really easy just to get caught up in drinking and water fighting. And while doing that is not the wrong way to celebrate Songkran, I just wanted to get something else out of the experience. Now, another thing to note in regards to befriending a local in Thailand during the celebration is that if Thai people see that you're trying to be respectful of their culture, they are so happy and willing to share it with you that to not befriend a local and get a bit more of a local perspective on things would almost be a travesty. I was being stopped constantly on the street, getting asked about my mustache, where I was from, if I was having a good time, whether I was thirsty, whether I wanted a beer. And that's all because I've learned a few Thai words and I've just generally shown a lot of interest into their culture. Yeah. Tip that I can have for you guys is in regards to safety and staying off the roads. During Songkran every year, there are hundreds of people that die because of drunk driving accidents. At the time of recording this video, there have already been 300 deaths related to drinking and driving, and that is not something that I want travelers or people that watch this video to fall victim to. In and around Chiang Mai, there is so much traffic and it moves so slowly. This isn't as much of an issue, but it's something that I still would go ahead and advise people to just stay off the roads, walk places and spend a little bit of extra money on accommodations around the old city. Drunk driving has become such an issue during Songkran that the seven days uh, surrounding the new year are known as the seven deadly days simply because there have been so many people that have died due to drinking and driving and Thailand has the second highest traffic mortality rate in the world. So if you guys are getting in a taxi in a song tao or on a tuk-tuk just if the driver seems drunk or inebriated get out of the tuk-tuk and wait for someone else. It's not worth risking your life over. Now my fifth and final tip for you guys is pace and space. Normally a term used for basketball, but we're going to go ahead and make that apply to Song Kron. What I mean by pace and space is that this is a three day long holiday and it usually uh, lasts for like four nights of partying. It is really easy to get caught up in the moment and just to binge drink all day for three days straight. I can tell you that that is not the best way to celebrate because you will be hurting by the second or third day and your Songkran celebration will be compromised. There is nothing wrong with having a relaxed, casual day of drinking with friends, trying local food, and, and just generally enjoying the celebration and a little bit more mellow of a circumstance. There's three days to party and drink. I would say that the worst case scenario is to go so hard the first couple days in drinking that by the end of it, you don't even want to participate in it. It's a three day long holiday and usually the last day is the craziest, so pace and space on the drinking and partying. Well guys, that wraps it up for my survival guide for Songkran. If you've liked this video or you found it helpful, go ahead and give the video a thumbs up. If you're interested in some items that you might want to have before the Songkran celebration, I'm going to have that listed in the description down below to the next video I'm going to do regarding Songkran.